Welcome. This is Mr. Fisher Flips for fourth grade math. Going to start out today with a graphic. It represents the FLIP classroom. FLIP stands for Flexible Environment, Learning Culture, Intentional Content, and Professional Educators. If we look at that, Flexible Environment is what we're trying to do. We're being flexible with how we want to do the lessons. We're learning. Our intentional content is division this week. And we're going to change this from professional educators to professional students because we are all trying to learn. Our lesson today will be relating three methods of dividing. We're going to look specifically at dividing with four digit dividends. If we look at our lesson and our outline, we've been doing usually every other lesson when we do the flipped lesson, but lately we've been doing one lesson by lesson. Because we're struggling with how to divide, we're slowing down so that we can be flexible, so that all learners can be successful. And so we've done five, three, four, and five right back to back. And so it slowed us down. We probably won't get done with the whole unit before Thanksgiving, but pretty soon after, because we're going to be able to understand it all the way. So our lesson that will be prepared for Wednesday's um, assignment. We're going to make sure that you know how to do it but because I'm going to do it with you. And we're going to do, practice some of these so that you can be able to do a four-digit dividend. And so when you go 8,370 divided by 6, you won't be scared about it. You'll be able to tackle it like it was a challenge. Jumping into the three methods, I'd like to show you what they are. And I'll make sure that this tool is somewhere on and is a link on the blog or in Google Classroom. There are three different methods. The first method is the place value section method. And if you notice, it's taking the first box here is going to take it to the tens place. Because when you cover up the four and the three, and you just look at the two, two cannot be divided by five. And so we're going to take it and divide it by 24. 24 divided by 5, we think that 4 is less than, but not greater than, 4 times 5. And so we take 4 times 5, and it's 20. And so we're going to take 40 times 5 equals 200 to do the whole full problem. When we do that, we bring down the 43. We take the 43 over to the next box because now we're just going to be dealing with the 43. We're not dealing with the hundreds anymore. Now we're going from the tens place to the ones place. 5 goes into 43 about 8 times, and 8 times 5 is 43 or 40. We take away, we have 3 as a remainder. And so we look at that and it makes sense. The expanded notation method is very similar. We take and go to the tens place first, and we're going to take 40 times 5 is 200. Then, when we just have 43, we take 43 divided by 5 equals about 8. 8 times 5 is 40, and we have 3 left over. So if you look at those two methods, there's not too much difference other than we're going down this way, but we're both checking to make sure that we have the tens place and the ones place and any remainders. The third way is the di digit by digit or what I call the traditional method. And the traditional method is going by the same routine except you're just isolating that tens place first then that ones place with a remainder of three. Well there's methods and then there's ways. Starting next week I'm going to make this a challenge but it's also going to be part of the lesson because I want you to understand the three ways that I learned how to do division. First way, if you notice, it's the same problem. So we know that um, 5 goes into 24 four times and 5 goes into 43 eight times. So if we take and put 80, 48 above, we get 243 and we know that there is a remainder of, sorry, 240. Let me fix that. So we have a remainder 
of 3. Well, the next way that I like to teach the students is the calculator way. And there's a very important part of the calculator way, and that is you need to be able to put a decimal right after the 3 and after the 8, and we're going to put 48 back up there. And when, uh, well, it doesn't want to move for me, so we're going to do it this way. Okay, 48 times 5 is 240. And notice I've got the decimal right after that. Now, when we bring down the 3, we're going to have 3 there. And we're going to bring a 0 into the equation. And when we bring a 0 into the equation, we bring it down, and now it's 30, or 3.0. But 30 divided by 5 is 6. And so if you were to take this with a calculator, 6 times 5 is 30. When you take 243 divided by 5 on a calculator, you won't find a remainder you'll find a decimal point six. This last way is the traditional method, but when you get to the very end, you're going to have 48 with the remainder of 3. Well, that 3 was 3 parts out of how many parts were we dividing by? three parts out of five. So our answer in this equation is actually 48 and three-fifths. And you can do the math again and check by taking three divided by five and you'll see that it's 0 0.6 to find the calculator answer. But we're going to try that to make sure that you understand how to do those three different ways. Well, here's a problem that will actually be on your homework. We have 2,238 divided by 6. And I'm doing this the place value method way, and place value section method way. And so if I take that, I'm going to look at that 2, and I can't do it with the first 2, but if I combine with the 2 and the 2, so 22, I know 6 is going to be less than 22. So 6 goes into 22. 4, no, 4 times 6 is 24. So we have to go one lower. So I'm going to go 3. 3 times 6 is 18. And when we get the answer, we get 438. And don't forget to use our method. Divide, multiply, subtract, bring down. I forgot to to show you to bring down, but we're going to divide again. 6 goes into 438. Ooh, that's close to 7. Let's make that a 7. And what else do I need to do to add to that? I need to add a 0 because we're doing it by 70. 70 times 6 is 420. We bring that over here so we have it nice and neat. And then we subtract. 8 minus 0, this is the bring down, the subtracting, sorry. Now the 3 minus 2 is 1, 18. We bring this 18 up over here, and 6 goes into 18 how many times? We're doing the dividing part, 3. 3, now we multiply the manure part, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 18, now we're doing the subtracting, the smelling is 0. Do we have to bring anything down? No. Our answer is 373. See? You can do it. Well, somebody couldn't do it. Puzzled Penguin, he made a mistake. In this problem, his teacher told him he was wrong. And the reason why he was wrong is, if you look at it, he took this and he put the answer in the wrong spot. He put the 7 in the 
thousands place, he needed to put it in the hundreds place. If he had put it in the hundreds place, then it would have fit. So his answer is, since you cannot divide the divisor 5 into the first digit of the dividend 3, the quotient must begin at the next place value. So the next quotient, he should have started right above the 8. So his 7 should have been right there. And it should be in the hundreds place, not in the thousands place. The quotient is 769 remainder 2, not 7069 remainder 2. So looking at your homework tonight, you're going to have a few problems to practice what we just looked at. And then you're also going to have a few problems where you're going to do story problems. Now remember the, the story problem that we used in class that we can substitute every time. If we take 145 cookies under the table and divide it by five friends, we're going to get a total amount. Now you just have to make sure how many peanuts did each squirrel get? Well, those squirrels are our friends. And we're not looking at peanuts, we're looking at cookies in the cookie jar, right? Or under the table. So 1,148 cookies under the table divided by seven, and you're going to find the answer every time. So relate the cookies under the cook cookies under the table with any story problem and you'll be able to figure them all out. There will be a few extra problems that will be reminding you how to use tables, how to multiply, showing your division, and a stretch your thinking problem. Now remember on stretch your thinking, whatever you put down is going to be a correct answer because you're thinking it through. So I will accept almost all your answers if you've thought them through. Well, that brings us to the end tonight. Um, for those that are doing it online, you'll be able to see the answer or the questions later this afternoon. And that's all I have for tonight. Good night.